From the darksome balconies of three haunted belfries fly three gothic beauties, taking to flight on auspicious autumn winds, beneath thunderous jade skies whence darkness descends. Sweetly this chilled October gale whispers secrets to the dead in their graves, in concert with an organ and funeral bells, serenading dark angels of unparalleled grace. When the westering sun has wept bitter tears upon the sleeping sea, ere hiding from dusk in her nocturnal embrace, despair, agony, and death careen with desire to drink the blood of their victim and the tears on her face. An ill portent of swarming bats heralds a mortal's demise as tragedy creeps to the doorstep of her heart, whilst vengeful dark beauties fly to the music of her cries. When they befall her alone and from this life she departs. Her precious blood trickles like droplets of rain in a prelude to immortal night. Three darkling queens revel, their pleasure her pain, and gothic beauty reigns sovereign over the light. So I wake from restless sleep in the dark fever of this dream. The beloved nightmare of thee I pray once more to see. Lest from thy terrifying and beautiful caress I be parted forever. My fixation on thee bringeth me to see mine own fall from grace. Wilt thou not let me go, or am I yours alone? I tread beneath swaying oak trees, and dead autumn leaves crunch with each step, breaking the dread silence in this vale of tears. Dower are the heaths I see if thou saunterest not upon the silky lay. Gloomy these wind swept moors in lasting want of thee. Wherefore I bid thee, Gothic beauty, reveal thyself to me, and we may meander on the night's blackest shore. Thy haunting spectre doth beckon, and at thy behest I follow, peering betwixt weather grave stones and abandoned gallows, where reapers of men wait with hungering scythes. My soul I should not commend into their lifeless hands, for marked by thine own gaze am I. If I should die the death, thou wilt let that fatal arrow fly. The nails in my coffin thou hast the pleasure to drive home. When at thy beloved hands I give up the ghost. Tendrils of mist like creeping fingers slither between the black trees whose branches sway pendulously in the nightly wind. As fell spirits who died in unrest wander these fields like asphodel. A raven sits upon a tombstone and mocks this lost and wayward soul, endeavoring to find his bride to darkness who came to him like a wild, black nightmare, taking his heart by storm. And so I search in the furor of desire for the amongst these tombstones, restless specters waking after dark claw at the mouths of their graves, and ghosts dwelling in forsaken crypts seek to chill the earth again as their caskets are left unclued. Yet lurking deep in this deathly and hallowed ground thou art not, Wherefore my spirit is downcast within me. Silent statuary doth as though by mere grimace laugh me to derision, For she who walks in beauty hath seemed to leave me love lorn in the night. Nightfall seals in with ease as heavy storm clouds gather, Pouring rainy laments upon the dark tree-laden grove and haunted houses yonder. In the distance sits a castle by the sea, and sconced high on a jagged cliff over storm-tossed waves. Yet I look past yon tempest, and on the dark fortress, gothic in its dread facade where gargoyles reign, with imposing gates which bar the dead from entrance. Its black heights stir the lustrous pall overhead, and vaulted arches below swell as a night's grandeur they portend, an omen of delightful things to come. I hear amidst the forest the lovely nightside sing, the wolves howl at the glowing moon above, by whose waxen light thy stalking shadow lengthens. I feel thee close to me, O thou pale enchantress, casting horribulation upon my skin like an evil spell. I wander the dark forest at thy pleasure, my often wanted mistress of darkness. Thou dost enchant me, verily, my fairest Hecate. Thou dost embrace me, thou dost entrance me like darkest Circe, to make me sleep dreamily, sempiternally. The dark red potion of thy love I drink deeply, and it is ensorceling me eternally. Thy precious voice singeth sweetly thy magic charm, and slowly sorceress thou dost bewitch me. 
Thou dost hex me beneath the moon alive with mystery, and there my pallid enchantress kisses me. The seductive elixir in my veins thou art soon to drink, when thy fangs sink into me. Ineluctable is thine embrace with which you tempt me to come closer. Behold, heart and the mind find my dark love is not in vain. Thou callest me out of my grave at last, and I am witness to this stormy and wondrous night of the vampires. Shadows at length in the dusk take now thy graceful form, and the poignant wind carries thy scent. The woman of dark desire is aroused when the silhouettes are wed with her at dark. Again do those gothic belfries fill the night with foreboding cadence, as the mourners bewail the victim buried in a portending coffin, the blackest catafalque. The funeral bells did awaken the huntresses who fly through this velvet mist on waxen wings, craving to lick dulcet tears from the pale cheek of a maiden by fangs that flowered. Seeking with passion at dusk they come, and the dead in their graves wait to embrace slain flesh in want of blood, for all vestal wine is ravished. For the virgin's immortal soul angels weep, for as she sleeps the dark bride claims her for her own, lavishing lovely kisses and dreaming that her body she might take. From behind trees when blown they fly, and wails resound as vampires abound in shadow prey, licking dripping lips and brood, pleasure delighted. Evermore darkly art thou alive in death, thou deniest dying by taking the life of another. Thine undead reign of terror bids my own death knells to toll, and my heart maketh haste to match that sonorous song with its fearful throbbing in the dark. Mistress whom I have made mine, I am bidden now by thee to pursue thee to the blackest castle gates, so at thy behest I come under thy sweet and deadly compulsion. Summon them I to ascend thither and chase after the woman who haunteth my dreams by the light of the day, and after dark cometh alive as the royalty of nightmare. I pass in stealth beneath the veiled turrets above and elude the florida glimmer of these torches upon the wall. Holding fast to the pulling silhouettes that reach far and wide in this gloomy antechamber. Soon the midnight bells sound, and I hearken to that dulcet ringing, knowing thou art dreadfully soon in thy vampiric becoming. Long dost thou make me tread these unlit halls where sinister things sought to be kept secret lie. Yet faithfully have I flown from door to door to discover thy resting place. Thine arrow of blood love hath pierced me deep, and fatal is the wound of desire thou hast left imprinted on my heart. So when at last these heavy golden gates are opened up to me, and thee I finally see, I am overwhelmed and nearly swoon as I fall through the portal and into thine arms. Here my queen burns with ardor thy hall of grandeur. Thy wonderful masquerade ball calleth all the creatures of the night. The harpsichord plays a haunting air on this night of All Hallows' Eve, and I wander in awe amidst thy gothic hall where immortals dance with balletic grace. Like the heated blood in my veins, white candle wax rolls freely in pools in the reservoirs of candelabras aglow which shed amber light upon thy guests clad in velvet darkness. But thou, O oh mistress, thou art the woman of my desire. When thou dost turn to me, I feel my soul catch fire, and tugging on the strings of my heart, you conduct me hopelessly into your dark embrace. Thy fatal flawless beauty compels me to follow thy lead. We dance in thy vesper masquerade. Thine evening minuet in thy castle, upon the rocks by the sea. I am overtaken by thee, my queen, as at thy command I twirl thee and watch, transfixed by thy dreadful desire. Thy blood-red pomegranate gown swathes thy lithe body. Thy sleek, lustrous hair flows down upon thy pale white skin. Upon thy slender finger is a gorgeous ruby solitaire, and a necklace of diamonds bedazzles thy breast, 
Yet behold, thou art a jewel more radiant than even these. Upon thy face rests the golden mask of Venetian design, yet hidden not from sight are thy glowing eyes which can vainly seek to belie the craven hunger of thine eternal bloody fangs. And so, creature most sublime, my heart on fire is thine. Here I lust to make thee my queen, that you might reign over me at thy pleasure. I give myself to thee, and am soon to fall to thine intoxicating bloodlust, the fragrance of thy dark desire. My dark queen, the utter fevered need of thee stiffens the hot blood within, and so I dip you low with the music's crescendo, our heart beats allegretto. Thy long hair flows down thy back, and thy soft white neck thou givest unto me. So does thy breathing quicken its pace as I draw nigh, amazed by the fangs which lengthen in blood lust to pierce you to the heart. Your pale face mantles richly as thy hands curl into mine, and so I go into you darkly as the crowds round us spin beneath crystal chandeliers and ever-melting candles. Your throat is luscious with wine as I fill my chalice eternal seductress. The taste of your hot blood in my mouth makes me shiver as supreme, vampiric evil courses through my veins. Wickedly am I made replete with thee, and fatigued do I grow, as the chambers of my heart are like goblets filled to the brim with thee. Thou art like a beautiful corpse in mine unrelenting grasp, unmarred by decay as I drink deeply of thy lifeblood. So like a nightfall from grace do I fall in deadly love with thee, and by thy scent I am bound the sweet perfume of blood lust which you wear on thy skin. Darkling, darling mine, in concert do we rise, our bodies ablaze dancing as thy blood rolls down thy breast and reddens thy dress. Libidinous hearts together tied and ever tethered beat with a red hot clangor, whilst the organ vends its phantom toccata throughout these maddened halls. Two precious rubies upon thy snow white neck glisten as darkness befalls the earth again, and at last my gothic beauty looms over me. You lift from thy lovely face thy phantasmal mask of lustrous gold, and I see this uneclipsed goddess in full. Aphrodite herself would blush at the sight of this gorgeous queen. Enraptured and enslaved by your heart, you lull me darkly in thy trance. My gaze locked on thee is unbroken as you take me by the hand and lead me from thy grand hall. I hear not even our steps or the music at this hour as I am fixated on your purple glowing eyes in the darkness, your long, bold black lashes and full blood-red lips did mesmerize me. We go alone at thy will, and warm winds this autumn night waft in through open lunette windows as sweetly thou dost promise me to bring to life every dark fantasy. Thy sweet love bites portend a demise on my neck but I am wont to let thee have thy craving way with me. Into thy darkened chamber we pass, where the velvet curtains of thy boudoir fall quickly open, and we fall at once upon thy bed of roses.